Hello, my name is Ariel Taroski and I serve as the Director of Education and Communication for Triangle Fraternity. I want to thank you for taking the time today to view this webinar, The Secrets to a Successful Recruitment. This webinar is going to be helpful to anybody, whether you're the recruitment chair, another member on the executive board, or you just received a bid into Triangle Fraternity. Our hope is to leave you with the tools and resources to effectively recruit for your chapter. As a framework for our conversation today, we're going to be breaking it up into four different pieces. Finding him, meeting him, friending him, and then bidding him. So let's first talk about finding him. You need to be aware of the following things. First, you need to determine who you want. And this isn't just you as an individual of who you want as your brother, but as a chapter or colony. Who are the men that you're looking for and who is going to contribute to making your fraternity better? Then you need to be aware of where is he? Where can you find him at? And then how do you find him? So the first is this idea of targeted selection. So you want to be strategic and thoughtful about who you're looking for. Uh, Fired Up Productions did a program called Dynamic Recruitment, and they broke it down into three different types of joiners. First, you have your always joiners, which are about 15% of the population who is highly likely to join a fraternity. This may be someone whose mother or father is in a fraternity, or they had exposure to Greek life prior to college. Next is our largest per percentage of the population, and that's our maybe joiners, coming in at 70%. They're neutral, and that's mostly because they're unaware of what Greek, Greek life is about, but they're open to listening to it. And then you have your never joiners, which is another 15% of the population that hates Greek life and would absolutely have no interest in joining, even if it came with a BMW and $3,000 cash. Often you will hear members in the organization, or maybe you are even guilty of saying it, is that there's no one ever to recruit. There's no one available. Well, we want you to really take a look at your recruitment potential, and so we have a little equation or math problem that you should do as a chapter to really identify how many men are eligible to join your chapter or colony. Um, we have this as a resource online, but we'll kind of talk through it quickly here. So first you want to take the total undergraduate population, and then you want to subtract the number of female students from that, which gives you your total number of undergraduate males. Then you need to subtract the number of males that are not in um, an applicable major. That gives you your total eligible based on our standards. Um, and then you need to subtract the number of eligible men that are already in fraternities. So that will give you the total unaffiliated eligible undergraduate males. And then take off that 15% of those never joiners. And that gives you your total always and maybe joiners. And then take 50% of that previous line and that gives you your, your recruitment potential. So I'm sure that once you do this, you will go from thinking that there's only 20 guys a semester that you can recruit to probably a couple hundred to upwards of a thousands, depending on the population of your school's undergraduate membership. So next you need to figure out where he is. So once you know who you want, then you need to position your members strategically so that you can find him. Um, so this is making sure that all of your members are involved in at least two other student organizations, making sure you're getting out of your residence hall room or out of the fraternity house and getting involved. Is your student activities board holding a concert or a magician or something fun that weekend? Make sure you go out there because there are potential, um, there are potential new members out there that you could recruit. Make sure you get engaged in the campus community. Go to athletic events. Go to um, different professional development opportunities. There are a ton of men there that could potentially be members of Triangle. And make sure you have fun. Do everything authentically and sincerely. So don't just go to events and stand in the back and look boring because people will notice that. Make sure that when you get out and you get involved that you're having fun while doing it because people will be attracted to that. So next we want to talk about how to find him. And there's this idea of referrals that I don't think that we do enough of. Some of your best recruiters are actually not members. They can be members of sororities, fraternities, other student organizations, friends in your dorms, faculty or staff. But in order for referrals to work, you need to educate those individuals. So if you go into a sorority meeting on a Sunday night, you need to talk to them about what Triangle is about, what your mission is, and who are the people that you're looking for, so that those individuals can then translate that message to people that they think would be good members for your organization. So make sure you're educating people 
And you should do that by having a brand or a tagline because it's easiest for people to remember. So let's do Pi Kappa Alpha, for example. They have a brand that is called Slag. And that means that they're looking for men that are scholars, leaders, athletes, and gentlemen. Say what you want about that acronym, but it's very easy to remember. And people that are not in their organizations can easily communicate that to people. And now they know what Pike is looking for and can help find those people. So if they know someone that is extremely con um, committed to scholarship and getting good grades and are leaders on campus, they might say, hey, there's this opportunity that you can get involved in. So as a fraternity, it's important that you come together and think of a brand or a slogan or a tagline that not only you can use, but that you can give to people who can refer members to your organizations. And then you want to make sure that you have a method to follow up. So if you're telling faculty or staff, hey, we're looking for men that are engineers, architects, and scientists that are committed to academics and really want a well-rounded and healthy member experience, once those faculty and staff members find people that would be good for your chapter, you need to make sure that they have an outlet to be able to give those names. So whether it's email recruitment chair at triangle.org, um, or you may set up a website where uh, those faculty and staff members can insert the person's name saying this person would be a good member. I've seen some really successful uh, groups create little business cards that have the QR code on it. And so they can hand them out anytime they find somebody that they think would be good for Triangle. They just scan that and it takes them right to the referral page. So there's a lot of creative ideas that you can use. But the point is, is that you want to have other people help in your recruitment process. So when you finally meet him, it takes motivation. It's not going to be easy. If you think about actually all the friendships that you've created, um, it takes effort on both parts. So once you have those referrals, you want to create a names list so that you can stay organized and so that everybody in your chapter can be involved in the recruitment process. You want to make sure you follow up. Faculty or staff members may have told that individual that they're giving you his name and if you don't follow up that that could look bad on you so make sure you follow up with the individuals that were referred to you and then your next step which is going to transition us into the next part of this webinar is that you want to ask him to hang out as friends don't overwhelm him with this idea of fraternity right away it might be a turnoff establish the friendship and the relationship first so before we get into how to build those meaningful relationships, I brought up this idea of a names list, and I'm sure that you've heard it before. This is just a resource for you to kind of jog your mind a little bit to get potential names on that list. Because sometimes we see lists getting passed around the room that have the same people semester after semester. So you want to really push yourself to think, who are these leaders on campus? Who are service-minded? Who are spiritually driven? Who are friends of your friends? This is not a time to judge. That comes after. So you literally just need to write down every name that you can think of to create that list. And then you can go through it and see who maybe aligns with the values of the organization or who would be a good fit for what you're looking for. This resource can also be found on the resource library for your recruitment resources. Okay, so meeting him. First impressions really do count. So if you want the part, you need to look the part. So that means really caring about yourself, making sure that you didn't just roll out of bed when you're going to meet him. Um, just that you care about the new relationship that you're building. Being the part is just important as looking the part, if not more important. Confidence is key. So when you go and you establish that friendship, make sure you're confident in yourself and the relationship that you want to form. Give them what they want. So if they're interested in having somebody to hang out with um, and play video games with or going to a gym or just someone to talk to, make sure that you guys are on the same page in building that relationship. And then you want to take action and follow through. So I always say that this part, this meeting him or this entrance into befriending him is a lot like dating. So you need to make sure that they're being fulfilled out of the relationship, that you're taking action and following through, and that you really care about the relationship that you're establishing. So this idea of confidence, you want to make sure that you're comfortable with yourself and what you're saying, because that can really show um, your authenticity or your sincerity. Don't be afraid to go up to new people that you've never met before and saying hello. Um, 
handshakes and a great smile is the first step to coming off as confident and showing them that you believe in yourself and that you care about um, forming a strong relationship. So now here comes sometimes the tricky part of actually starting up a conversation, especially because we live in this world of LOLs and BRBs and, and short text messages, that that conversation piece with another individual that's in person can be difficult. Um, Open-ended questions are your best friend because the second that you ask them closed-ended questions where they can just answer yes or no, that's all they're going to say and you're not having a meaningful conversation. And then sometimes it can get awkward and you get stuck. So open-ended questions. Tell me about yourself. What is your major? How did you decide on that? What types of food do you enjoy? Where are you from and what is it like? You do want the conversation to be authentic and go with the flow, but it's always helpful to have some um, questions that are in your back pocket that you can bring up should the conversation stall. The five F's are something that I always use when I want to get to know somebody um, and can be really helpful to you as you're starting that friending or recruit, recruiting process. So the five F's are family and friends, favorites, from, fun, and future. So family and friends, how do you know Ryan? Tell me about your family. How's your roommate? Favorites. Um, you can either ask a question or if there's things that have come up in conversation when they're telling you about themselves, make sure you're listening to that and bring it up again later. So I'm always on Reddit too. What's your favorite subreddit? Did you see that one post? Showing them that you're really engaged and you've listened to what they've been telling you will go a long way. Um, and then from fun and future. So future, what are you doing for break? What classes are you registered for? What would be your ideal job? Remember to take recruitment out of the equation. So I know it's very easy for us because it's all we really think about sometimes is our fraternity membership, that that is the first thing that we identify ourselves with in college. But you want to establish the friendship first because sometimes just throwing fraternity at them um, can be overwhelming or then the individual thinks that you might not really care about them as a person, that you just want to recruit them as a number. So focus on friendship first. If you can, maybe don't even bring up the fraternity aspect. Hang out, be casual, get to know one another, and follow up. And then introduce them to your friends. And secretly, these friends could be your brothers. So make sure the connection goes beyond you. Invite them to hang out. So if you guys are getting dinner together and you want to invite him to join you, um, and ask your friends if he can tag along. So if you guys are doing something on a weekend that might not be a structured fraternity event, that would be a perfect opportunity for him to come. That way you can see that the connection goes beyond just what you and him have. Then when you feel the time is right, you want to introduce him to Triangle. So this is like that dating part where you finally introduce your significant other to the family. If you listen to carefully to the conversations that you've been having up until this point, um, you should be able to start tr tying his experiences back to Triangle. So you mentioned before that you're really involved in high school and then you got to college and you didn't know what else to do other than study. I went through that exact same thing, but then joined Triangle and it gave me the connections, the unity and the leadership experiences that I was missing. So before you were just getting to know each other, laying that framework and that foundation. But now as you start having conversations, start listening to the things he's saying and figure out how you can tie it back to triangle. Maybe it's that they played rugby in high school and they're really looking to get involved. And you could say, oh, you know, you mentioned about rugby and how you did that in high school. Actually, one of my fraternity brothers, James, plays rugby. And I, he mentioned at our chapter meeting the other night that there are signups um, for walk-ons. Do you want me to connect you with them? So, again, easy ways to kind of Jedi mind trick them into connecting them to the fraternity. So you definitely want to show him the triangle experience, but then you want to tell it to him. So hopefully by you befriending him first and then having to meet your friends or brothers, he's already been able to see what triangle can offer. He sees the friendship. He sees the fun. He sees the things that you guys do on a weekly basis. But then you want to be able to communicate that to him because there is going to come a point where he may need to sell it to his parents or to his significant other. And so he needs to have the tangible benefits of why joining the fraternity or taking it past just that friendship is important. So selling the product. 
This is just something that I recommend to everybody before they go into the active recruitment phase. And it's really identifying what are the things, the top 10 things that you're saying to potential new members about your chapter. Um, I don't know what those are. So this is just a, a little brain jogger that you can do um, after this webinar or if you want to pause it now and take some time and really think about what am I saying to them about triangle? Um, some people may realize that they're not even, they can't even create a list of 10 things. And that's okay, but you want to make sure that the list is um, thoughtful and detailed and really paints a clear picture to somebody about what the fraternity can offer them. So there's this idea of features versus benefits. A lot of times when someone asks us, why should I join your fraternity? We say, well, you know, we do philanthropy and community service and the brotherhood is great. But while those words have meaning to you because you've experienced it, those are just buzzwords to somebody that isn't in a fraternity or sorority. So you want to be able to really think about what those benefits of the features are and then be able to provide a supporting statement. So it's all about painting a picture and telling a story. So instead of saying philanthropy, you can say, last spring we raised $20,000 for a local shelter and I got to deliver the check and the looks on their faces when they saw the amount was just indescribable. Um, so being able to do things like that and change lives is one of the greatest benefits of joining Triangle. So again, providing them with a real life story. And this will actually help you because when you go to apply for a job, they're going to want you to tell stories about what are your strengths or weaknesses or tell me a time that you did this. So this is good preparation for you when you get into an interview. Now, unfortunately, there are going to be people that are immediately going to shoot back with some excuses. And these are the top 11 excuses that we sometimes hear, whether it's that they can't afford it or someone doesn't want them to join. Uh, they're not the frat guy type. They don't have time. They don't want to buy their friends. Whatever the excuses may be, you need to be prepared to be able to come back with those excuses. I always say that the first time someone says no should never be an option. You should always be able to continue to talk with them through that. So you want to do this by quality responses, and that means by not getting defensive or blowing it off. So um, getting really angry that someone would say, I'm not the frat guy type. Well, what does that mean? That's not a good way to, to come back at the conversation. You want to make sure that you're using the feel, felt, found method. So I understand how you feel. I felt the exact same way, but here's what I found. And so again, you're telling that story. Make sure that when you're responding to excuses that you aren't lying or telling half-truths um, because that can get you into trouble in the long run. So if someone says, I can't afford it, and you say, oh, well, it's actually not that much money. Sometimes our treasurer even lets you not pay. And then they get into the organization and they find out that they have $350 due up front. You told them a little bit of a lie. So that can get you into trouble and then you have issues with retention. Make sure you're not dismissing their excuse. Respond like it's a big deal because to them it clearly is a big deal. And make sure that you don't fail to listen. You need to understand their concerns and be able to respond in the best way you can. And sometimes you're not the best person to respond. So you want to make sure that you know who in your chapter is so that you can connect, that, connect him to that person. So a majority of the time when you hear an excuse or concern, it's not because the potential member is blowing you off. It's actually because they don't have all the information. So these are just a couple examples of how you can respond to um, some of the excuses. And this resource is also online for you. Make sure you do follow-up questions um, when they give you an excuse because that may show you that they actually don't have information. And it can be a great time for you to give them the resources and inform them on the right pieces. Make sure you're being patient. As, just as much as recruitment feels like a really rushed and overwhelming process to you, think about how it felt when you were going through it as a potential new member because that's how they're feeling. If they have concerns, give them time, give them the information that they need, and then have them think it over and make sure you follow up. So when you're sealing the deal, so say you didn't get any excuses or you were able to um, get them to kind of work through that excuse and now they're excited to join, make sure you're clear about the expectation. So again, when we go back to the finances, make sure that they knew the, know the dues up front, that they know the time commitment that's going to be expected of them um, because that will help you in the long run with retention. 
Make sure you're genuine and authentic. Um, and make it a big deal. So when you do get ready to give that individual his bid, formalize how you offer the bid. I know one of the best memories of my sorority experience is when the chapter president and about 15 of the women in the sorority came to my dorm room and were singing and clapping and had the formal invitation and the, the president asked me if I would consider joining Phi Sigma Sigma. Um, so those things, while may seem small, can actually go a long way. So uh, make sure all of the members are involved. Tell him why you want him and do it in front of people because this is a really awesome and fun experience. And then celebrate his acceptance. Now, this is awesome. You befriended him. You um, introduced him to Triangle and he loved it. You bid him and you got him. Now, let's turn that one into ten. You want to make sure that you recruit his friends early. So if you see a group of guys that are always getting lunch together and you know that they aren't affiliated with the fraternity and maybe they're in one of your low-level engineering classes, go up to the group of friends and ask them to hang out. Um, use this to your advantage if you hear one of the excuses being, well, I already have my friends. Well, that's great. Like the more the merrier. Why don't you bring them along? After he signs a bid, make sure that's not the first question you ask him. I know that sometimes we're really amped up on the excitement of someone signing a bid, and then you want to say, hey, like, do you have a roommate? Maybe he would join too. Make sure that that moment is about him, and then when the time is right, you can ask him to bring his roommates or his friends to an event. And then you want to educate and empower him to continue the process. So recruitment is everybody's job. From the second you sign that bid to the moment you're about to graduate, everybody should be educated and know how to recruit effectively because then that will make your chapter that much stronger. So that was pretty quick and painless and hopefully you have some new ideas or we've got you thinking about recruitment a little differently. I want to thank Fired Up Productions who helped with some of those resources through their dynamic recruitment um, manuals. If you have any questions or there's things that maybe popped up for you, like how do I create this names list or, you know, we've actually been hearing these excuses and we don't know how to deal with them. Or maybe you're having trouble identifying what your tagline or brand is. We are here to help you. Um, and we, you know, care about your success as a chapter or colony. So with that, thank you for viewing this webinar. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at the national headquarters. Thank you.